Welcome to this Learn Electrics video, number 14 in our 18th edition exam help series. In this video, we will look at some essential formulas and calculations that are always asked as exam questions. And understanding these very simple formulas is so important in the exam. We can begin by looking at the adiabatic equation as found on page 196 of the Wiring Regulations book. The page is shown here along with the formula and a description of the different symbols used. You must get to know this page and how to use the formula. What then is the adiabatic equation? It is used to calculate the size of a protective conductor or earth as it is often called. We need to know certain parameters to do with the electrical circuit and this information will be given to you in the exam question. It is all about choosing a conductor size that will carry a big fault current without overheating before the fuse blows or the circuit breaker trips. It is very easy to interpret the formula. S is the size or cross-sectional area of the conductor. This is what we want to know. And this is found by inserting the other three parameters that are shown into the formula. We need to know the fault current, the operating time of the fuse or breaker, and this thing called K, the cable factor. So, why not do an example of this? Here is a typical exam question. Using the adiabatic equation, calculate the minimum cross-sectional area, or S, of a protective conductor when I equals 400 amps, T equals 0 0.4 seconds, and K equals 115. It is now just a matter of putting these numbers into the formula and pressing the buttons on our calculator. Here are the numbers inserted into the formula. I find it best to split the calculation into several easy steps rather than to attempt to do it all in one go. So 400 times 400 times 0 0.4 gives us 64000. And the square root of 64000 is 253 rounded up and 253 divided by 115 gives us an answer of 2.2 millimeters as a minimum size. In the exam you will be asked to choose a suitable cable size. It must always be equal to or greater than the size that you've just calculated. In this case we must choose 2.5 millimeter cable and how easy is that? We can try another. This time we have different numbers to enter. Follow the same logical method. Break it down into easy steps and we should have a minimum size of 3.23 millimeters. From the four choices offered, four millimeter cable is the one to select. And not just for the exam. This is what you would choose on site in the real world. Now do this one using the information that is provided. Pause the video whilst you do the calculation. And you should have a minimum size of 22.36 millimeters, making you select answer C, the 25 millimeter conductor. Voltage drop is another favorite calculation for exam setters. First of all, we need to know what is the maximum permitted voltage drop for a public supply at 230 volts such as we have in the UK. On page 383, we will find table 4AB. This tells us that for lighting circuits, the voltage losses in the actual conductor should not exceed 3% of 230 volts, which is 6.9 volts maximum. And for all other circuits, the maximum is 5% or 11.5 volts. Now, we can look at the actual volts drop and compare this to the maximum permitted values. The very simple formula is shown here. VD is the actual volts drop in the circuit. And this funny symbol MVAM is the millivolts drop in the cable for every amp of current flowing through every meter of the circuit. IB is the design current of the attached equipment or appliances. How much current has the manufacturer designed it to use. And L is the length of the circuit in meters. 
Finally, we have this number 1000. We must use this number to convert millivolts back into volts so that we can compare our actual volts drop to the maximum volts drop. Here is a typical exam style question. Calculate the voltage drop in a heater circuit with a maximum load of 13 amps and a circuit length of 40 meters. The circuit is wired in 2.5 millimeter twin and earth with a MVAM value of 18. All the information we need will be in the question. Again, use simple steps to find the answer. If we do our calculation correctly, we should have an answer of 9.36 volts. At full load, this circuit will lose 9.36 volts into the cable. This is less than the 11.5 volts permitted and is therefore an acceptable loss. And another, this time a cooker circuit. All the information you need is in the question. Pause the video whilst you work it out and then make your choice from the four that are offered. If you have done it correctly, you should have an answer of about 10.95 volts, give or take a tiny amount. And again, this is within acceptable limits. We can look now at cable size calculations and the rating factors for various conditions. In other words, cables in groups with other cables, cables in warm air environments and buried cables, etc. Anything that we do to a cable will usually make its conditions worse and we must avoid overheating the cable. One way to limit this overheating is to increase the cable size, but by how much? We want the cable to be big enough to carry the full load current safely, but not so big that it costs us or the customer too much money for extra copper. On page 373, we can see a list of tables that list data for all the conditions that might affect our cable. These are known as rating factor tables. Get to know them, it matters in the exam. Also on page 373 are data tables for the more popular cable types. And highlighted here is table 4D5 for twin and earth cable, called flat cable with protective conductor in the book. You will use this table a lot. Get used to finding it easily. It is on page 409. Commit the page number to memory if you need to. On page 378, we will find a whole page of fancy calculations for working out cable sizes for all these different conditions and rating factors. Don't worry, we're going to make it very easy. If we take the first equation, it looks like this. What does each part actually mean? The first symbol, IT, is the tabulated current, I for current, T for tabulated. It is the tabulated size and will tell us how big is big enough for the full load current. That funny mathematical symbol tells us that the tabulated size must be equal to or greater than the number that we work out with the formula on the right. And this number will be the size of the fuse or breaker called IN divided by all the rating factors or conditions that apply to it. It looks scary, but worry not. If only one condition applies, then the formula looks like this. In this case, we have chosen an increased air temperature, say in a boiler room or a conservatory in the summer. This is now much more manageable. We only need CA, we don't need all the rest. If a question asked, what size twin and earth cable should be selected for a circuit protected by a 16 amp breaker with an ambient air temperature of 50 degrees centigrade. Assume 70 degrees centigrade thermoplastic cable and reference method 100. We can begin by looking on page 373 and find the rating factors CA for ambient air temperatures. This is table 4B1 and you will find this on page 394. Find 50 degrees in the left column Find 70 degrees thermoplastic along the top and where they cross tells us that a rating factor of 0 0.71 must be applied. Divide IN, the size of the breaker, which is 16 amps, by 0 0.71 and the new tabulated rating 
is 22.52 amps. We should choose a cable that will take at least 22.5 amps. What does this mean? We must choose a cable that will carry 22.52 amps of current at 30 degrees centigrade, since 30 degrees is our reference temperature. The table then tells us that a cable that can carry 22.52 amps at 30 degrees will be able to carry 13 amps at 50 degrees without overheating. We've not finished yet. We know the current. Now we have to choose the cable size. Go back to page 373 and find the table for twin and earth cable. This is called flat cable with protective conductor in the book and is table 4D5 on page 409. On table 4D5, find method 100 along the top. Go down that column until you find a number equal to or greater than 22.52 amps, which is 27 amps. Now move to the leftmost column to find the tabulated cable size. In this example, we must choose a cable size of at least 4 millimeters to carry 13 amps in an ambient air temperature of 50 degrees centigrade. Let's look at cable grouping now. We can keep it simple and have just one condition affecting our cable again. Cables that are grouped together can mutually heat each other up and they can also slow down the cooling process of other cables. Which table gives information on grouping? Find page 373, then find table 4C1 rating factor CG for one or more cables in a group. And we will find this table on page 396. Here on page 396, we must choose how the cable is arranged, in air, on cable trays, etc. Then choose the number of cables that are grouped together, including your own cable. Find the D rating factor in the table, and this tells us that the current carrying capacity of your cable must be derated by this amount. Try this question. A cable is bunched in a group of four in air. It is protected by a 10 amp breaker and you must calculate the required tabulated current carrying capacity, IT, of the cable. This is the same formula as before, except now it is for groups of cables instead of air temperature. Pause the video and work through this example. This is an easy calculation and your answer should be 15.38 amps. And what does this tell us? In order to carry 10 amps in a group of four cables, your cable must be able to carry 15.38 amps when it is not in a group or a group of one as they call it in the book. Now we can apply two factors. So let's see what happens. A twin and earth cable is to be installed in a ceiling using reference method 100 and it is protected by a 20 amp breaker. The cable is in a bunched group of three including itself and the ambient air temperature is likely to be 40 degrees centigrade at times. If the cable is 70 degree thin plastic material choose a cable size that will meet these conditions. It is the same formula as before except that the breaker size IN is now divided by CG and CA, but it is still easy. Look on page 373. Find the rating factor for CG, table 4C1, on page 396, which is 0 0.70. Find the rating factor for CA, table 4B1, page 394, and this is 0 0.87 and work these two out first. Multiply 0 0.70 by 0 0.87 and we have a new number 0 0.609 for the bottom row. Now divide the breaker size 20 amps by 0 0.609 to give us 32.84 amps. The cable we should choose must be able to take 32.84 amps or more in normal conditions. Now select a cable size. We know it is twin and earth cable which is called flat cable with a protective conductor. This is table 4D5 and is found on page 409. 
The cable must be rated at 32.84 amps and reference method 100 must be used. And we find that 6mm cable will take 34 amps. Therefore, we should choose 6mm cable to carry our 20 amp load in the given conditions. Now try this one. 70 degree thermoplastic twin earth cable is to be installed in a sealing void using reference method 101 and it will be protected by a 10 amp circuit breaker. The ambient air temperature may reach 35 degrees centigrade and the cable will be bunched in a group totaling five cables. What is IT, the tabulated current rating, and what cable size should be chosen to carry the load safely? This is the formula that you need. Use the tables on page 394 and 396. Once you have a current size, you know where to find the cable sizes on page 409. Pause the video whilst you work it out. And you should have cable rating IT is 17.73 amps and cable size is 4 millimeters. Easy really. Just follow that simple logical process and break it down into small steps. It's no good trying to take shortcuts and doing the calculation all in one go if you get the wrong answer. So in summary for the calculations, learn the formulas. This is so very important. They will not give you the formulas in the exam questions. They will expect you to know them or at least to know where to find them in the book. There is no shortcut for this. Make up your own questions. Calculate some examples from your workplace or home. Practice now will make life in the exam so much easier. We also have extended videos on voltage drop formulas and the adiabatic equations that go into much more detail along with many more examples to practice on. A link to both of these will be found in the description to this video. Now we can look at the answers to session 13's questions on the appendices. Here are the answers for questions 1 to 4. Pause the video and check your answers. And questions 5 to 8? Well, there we are. We are at the end of this exam help series, for now. But our normal weekly electrical tech tips videos will continue. We are already planning a help series for 2396, PAT testing and other exams. Do let us know what you think by leaving a comment. And we hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics to be both useful and enjoyable and that you continue to add more knowledge to your mental toolbox. Please click on subscribe below. It will give you access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you will also ensure that you don't miss our next video. By clicking on subscribe, you also help us too and we do appreciate that small act. Also, typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will give you access to all the videos. Thank you for watching and we do hope to see you again very soon.